the early access combat flight simulator Nuclear Option with its focus on fun, imagined but alternative contemporary setting, accessible multiplayer and of course city smashing nuclear blasts is our current go to choice in the genre right now. But there's no denying that your opening hours in the game can be a brutalizing experience until you truly find your wings. With just a couple of tricks and tips however that learning cliff can be evened out considerably and so with that in mind here's my list of things I wish I'd known when starting out in Nuclear Option. First things first before you even strap a plane to yourself a large portion of Nuclear Options missions bizarre as it may seem don't allow you to respawn by default when you mess up and explode and you'll do that a lot in the early days. That's it mission over and you need to restart. For the newer player that can be incredibly punitive and it might even stop those players from exploring the game further which would be a shame. I'm very pleased to report however that it doesn't have to be that way. When selecting your mission of choice right next to the start mission button you'll see customize mission. If you hit that button you'll be presented with a plethora of mission default override options. All of these are worth exploring as you get more familiar with the sim but far and away the single most important option when you're learning the ropes and by learning the ropes what I of course mean is exploding into flaming shards of red hot metal higher above a brutally uncaring battlefield the most important option is the ability to respawn. It's quite literally a game changer. When you're finding your way in the sim of course explore all the missions and find out what works best for you to learn the real basics. For me if I had a time travelling DeLorean I'd tell the only slightly younger version of me to play the bridge defence mission more than I did at the start. Bridge defence starts you on an airfield in the cockpit of the humble cricket. More on that in a moment. You are, initially at least, tasked with, as the name would suggest, defending a large suspension bridge that is about to be crossed by an invading column of vehicles. Your initial and immediate concern is removing that column of vehicles allowing your own friendly column of vehicles unfettered access to the bridge and the swathe of enemy units on the other side. In the later stages the mission has you taking out a key vehicle production facility still in the humble cricket whilst occasionally defending your airfield from the odd attacking enemy cricket. It never really overwhelms you with targets you get plenty of support aircraft along with you but never so many that there's no point in you being there. Your almost inevitable destruction will respawn you after you've started the mission with respawn enabled around 10 miles from the targets meaning you have a nice quick turnaround time to get you back into the action and the tech level almost never goes above the starter plane. All this has the multi threaded advantage of never overwhelming your slow moving prop aircraft with fast jets intent on your utter decimation. You get to learn some of the games early and more common weaponry at a much more manageable pace whilst trying out lots of different tactics certainly when it comes to ground attack at least to figure out what works and most important of all and I cannot stress this enough it teaches you the often completely underappreciated value of the humble cricket. An aircraft that can if wielded correctly in the right circumstances be utterly devastating to even the most advanced of enemy forces. Never take your eyes off an enemy cricket ever. While we're talking about the power of the crickets, bridge defence and enemy convoys I cannot recommend the following highly enough. When taking on an enemy convoy in any aircraft but in the cricket in particular the AGR-18 linchpin rockets are utterly devastating when used correctly. Typically a convoy will feature a large quantity of lightly armoured vehicles including maybe a fuel tanker and a main battle tank or two. Those lightly armoured vehicles will almost certainly include various flavours of SAM or AAA that is utterly devastating to attacking aircraft so it's key to remain low and as much as possible keep the terrain between you and the anti-air units while you make your approach. As you get closer making sure you first have the linchpin set as your weapon 
get your targeting reticule over the convoy and hold down the targeting button. Doing so will select all the targets in the convoy that are appropriate to the linchpin to hit. This will include any fuel trucks, recon vehicles, SAM launchers and anti-air artillery. Then ideally when you're within around 3.5 miles pop up, quickly check that you have clear line of sight all the way to the target on the monitor in the center and there is no terrain or buildings etc between you and it aim in the rough direction of the convoy and unleash a salvo of rockets. SAM and AAA vehicles will attempt to shoot down incoming missiles as well as aircraft but when you're right on top of the target vehicles and you unleash a swarm of rockets there is too little time and too many targets for them to react effectively and the convoy will be ripped apart. If you hit a fuel truck the massive explosion from that alone will destroy a lot of the enemy vehicles. Once you've released your salvo turn away immediately and get back down behind cover as soon as possible dumping countermeasures as appropriate to any incoming threat warnings behind you. This tactic is always useful but I've personally found it particularly appropriate as an opening gambit in the bridge defence mission. In any given scenario having successfully completed your attack or when you've simply run out of stuff to throw at the enemy if you can land at a friendly airbase that has an ammo and fuel truck parked at it which they all do to begin with at least then you can be refueled and rearmed if you come to a complete halt near them for a few seconds. Better still having halted at a friendly airbase if you press the eject button instead of actually ejecting your pilot and co-pilot will calmly exit their aircraft, despawn and then allow you to choose not only an airfield to take off from again but also give you the opportunity to choose a different aircraft or loadout if you so desire. When you're in your cockpit whether it be parked or already airborne if you bring up the map you can left click on any known unit enemy or otherwise setting it as your target in the cockpit. If you click on a unit or a missile before you've chosen an airbase or a plane to spawn in your camera will immediately zoom to that unit and allow you to follow it using all the different cameras that come with the game already. Using the movement keys when following a unit will detach the camera and allow you to move freely about the battlefield becoming a passive observer to the chaos. To choose a different unit or spawn back into an aircraft just bring up the map again and make your selection. This is of course by no means an exhaustive list of tips and tricks but hopefully you'll find something in here to ease the early parts of your journey into nuclear option at the very least. What missions would you recommend for learning the early stages of the game? Is there a tactic or feature that you feel every pilot should know? And what do you wish you'd known when you first started playing the game? Let us know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video remember to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you want to directly support our work here at the Burr Pit you can also join us on Patreon. That's it for now. We look forward to seeing you next time.